Welcome to another episode of the FWAT Show on the Coil Entertainment Network, the Happy Hour Network, VillageConnectionRadio.com, iTunes, the Google Play Store, and everywhere else on the planet, including China, because I'm talented. (laughs) I'm your host, Rob Steele. That's Jesus Jones in the background. And this is the show that lets you know that it's not just you. The world has actually lost its collective mind, as evidenced by this story from the New York Post which says that doctors are now actually having to warn women against, and I'd like to be making this up, putting wasp nests in their vaginas. Yeah, let's think about that for a minute. The concept behind this is that if you put a ground-up wasp's nest in your girl part, it will tighten and rejuvenate it. However, every medical test performed by every doctor who has looked at this has said that's a bad idea even a quote from gynecologist jen gunter it's dangerous and she says the practice is using a drying agent to tighten the girl part however drying the vaginal mucosa increases the risk of abrasions during sex and destroys the protective mucus layer both of which are bad for you. So if you were thinking about inserting a wasp's nest in your, yeah, you know what? Let's just move on to the next story. Well, they're at it again. United Airlines had to issue a formal apology to the family of Henry Amador Batten, a 53-year-old father who was on a United flight with his eight-year-old child recently. His child is afraid of flying, so as many fathers are wont to do, he put his arm around the child and gently consoled him, saying that it'll be okay, we're just flying from Raleigh, Durham to Newark, New Jersey, like you do. Unfortunately, several flight attendants thought he was molesting the child, because who else would put their arm around a child like that? Never mind the fact that There were only two seats in that section. The child was in one, the father was in the other, and who the hell lets an eight-year-old fly on the plane all by themselves? Yes, couldn't possibly be his father, and gee, we couldn't have handled that any better, could we? But then again, this does remind me that this episode is brought to you by United Airlines. United Airlines. Because we let our children under eight fly by themselves, don't you? And now for the stroke-inducing comment from Trump of the week. Except, I'm not really sure which one is more stroke-inducing. The first one he said, and I'll go chronologically, was, We need the courts to give us back our rights. We need the travel ban as an extra layer of safety. Okay, how oxymoronic in a statement can you get? Our rights include the right to travel. Everyone in this country has a right to travel. But the travel ban permits some people who were born and live in this country from traveling. This is the kind of thing that you say to a computer in Star Trek to make it blow up, isn't it? How stupid is this? But, silly me, he's not done. How about, in regards to the terrorist attack in London last week, quote, Did you notice we're not having the gun debate right now? That's because they used knives and a truck. All right, you twit. That's because the United Kingdom got rid of their guns. They don't have them. Gone. Think of how many would have gotten killed if they had guns. But they don't. That's why they used a truck. And knives. And that makes sense if that's what they're going to do. Although that's still a horrific thing. And I'm not condoning it in any way. And I will send thoughts and prayers. I guess. There's not much I can do for that. Except tell people that... Donald Trump does not represent people in the United States because he's a jackass, and we try not to be. But there's a new excuse for Donald Trump, and I am not sure if I like this or not. It's just weird. And it comes from Republican senator from the great state of South Carolina. I've been to South Carolina. It's not that great. Anyway, from South Carolina, Lindsey Graham has said that Donald Trump could not have possibly colluded with Russia because he's too incompetent. Yeah, one of the Republican leaders just called his own president incompetent. 
how screwed up is this party going to get before we finally go, you know what, all of you just need to go home. Seriously. And I'm not sure that's going to help. I mean, even the WWE is stepping in to get rid of the Russia thing. They were pushing a Russian wrestler named Rusev, making sure he got to be, you know, one of the people in contention for the belt. But then this whole investigating Donald Trump, who has heavy ties to the WWE, came up. So they stopped pushing the Russian wrestler and we haven't seen him since. Hmm. Fake news? No, can't be. But speaking of fake things... And I forgot to mention this in the show last week, but it fits just as well here. There was an audit done on Twitter. Did you know you could do that? Yes, it's fairly easy to do. You can go to Twitter Audit Pro and check Twitter accounts for realism. And by realism, what they mean is some Twitter accounts are real and have people that use them. Some are fake accounts. There's no profile, there's no picture, there's no posts, there's no nothing. It's just someone created an account and let it go, but they used it to follow someone else, to boost someone else's numbers. So, for example, someone did this Twitter audit on, oh, I don't know, Donald Trump's account, and it turned out that only 51% of his followers are real. That's right, 49% of the people following Donald Trump don't exist. But I suppose there is good news on the Donald Trump front. And by good news, I mean U.S. District Judge David Hale ruled that it is plausible that the president incited a riot during his campaign. This goes back to March 1st, 2016, when several people at a Donald Trump event were protesting him, like millions of people are doing now. Except these three people were ambushed and beaten by Trump supporters. Donald Trump egged them on and told them, keep it up. That's called inciting a riot, which is what it turned into, which means our president could be facing more jail time. Which leads me to something that needs to be brought up again. I bring this up every couple of months and people don't seem to be paying a whole lot of attention to it. So I would like you to pass this part of the show around. The United States seems to have a problem with the concept of prioritizing. Our priorities in this country are so hideously wrong. Donald Trump blatantly disobeyed the law by telling people, yes, beat those people up. You can't do that. That's not legal. And what did we do to punish him? We made him the president. What? How does that happen? Or how about this? There's a North Carolina woman named Sarah Anderson from the Word of Faith Church who admitted, finally, that she led about 30 parishioners in an attack of a gay church member to expel his gay demons. How is this event, which happened in 2013, just now coming up in court? Seriously, what's taking us so long? She seems to be happy about it. And... That's wrong. That is so horrifically wrong. Conversely, do you remember being in school and passing notes with each other? Well, they don't do that these days. They do texting. And because of a bill passed in the house, soon teenagers who are caught sexting with each other, talking sexy every so often, yeah, taking pictures of yourself in ways that should not be done at any age, but they do anyway, and there's not much we can do about it. Regardless, if, let's say, a 14-year-old sends a picture of his private parts to his 14-year-old girlfriend, ooh, that's going to be illegal, and he'll be sent to prison for 15 years. Just basically for passing a note in class. I'm not condoning it. I'm just saying, that's a bit much, don't you think? You think maybe we could reword this a little bit so that doesn't happen? Just so you know, in California, it now costs $75,560 a year per prisoner. This is according to the LA Times. And if you haven't done the math yet, I'll do some of it for you. It costs more to house a prisoner in California than it does to send someone to Harvard for a year. Let that sink in. Where are our priorities? They're not on the American people. They can't be, because otherwise we wouldn't let things like this happen. It's all about the money now. It can't be about the money. 
There's a Native American saying that I believe came from the Cree tribe that says, when the last tree has been cut down, the last fish caught, the last river poisoned, only then will we realize that one cannot eat money. And that's brilliant. You can't eat... Okay, it's got lots of fiber content, but I'm pretty sure the inks that we now put in it to keep it from being counterfeited are poisonous. We don't have our priorities straight in this country, and that needs to change. I'll even throw in the gun thing again, because it came up this week. Why didn't they use guns in the London attack? Because they don't have them there. What is the murder rate in that country? Less than 10% of what it is here. That's in percentages, not in actual raw numbers. And what is the main problem with guns? It doesn't have a secondary purpose. The purpose of a gun is now and forever will be to destroy things. That's its purpose. It doesn't have a secondary purpose. But Rob, we should ban knives and hammers and cars because they're just as deadly. Knives can be used to cut things. They are, it, it's a tool. You can cut rope. You can cut branches off trees. You can cut vines. Knives have a secondary purpose. Hammers. Hammers, you can put nails in walls with hammers. Then you can hang things up. That is a primary purpose of a hammer. A car. A car has a purpose to transport something from point A to point B. That is the primary purpose. The secondary purpose. Yes, they can be used to damage people. The gun has no other purpose than to damage things. Be it another person, a target, a milk bottle, it doesn't matter. Now, if you want to have a gun in this country, there's a very simple way of going about doing this. Of course, they won't do it because it would make sense and they would lose money and we can't have that. But the simple way to do this is to make sure that everyone who has a gun has the gun, regardless of what kind it is, registered in a national database where if the gun is used in a crime, we can trace it back to the owner and put them in jail next to the teen who was done up for sexting. Let's make gun owners responsible for their guns because right now they're not and they need to be. We can't all have our heads up our asses like Kentucky Governor Matt Bevan. Guess what? He's a Republican who has said we can stop gun violence with roving prayer groups. He said that. Don't look at me like that. This is his quote, not mine. Roving prayer. He doesn't say what religion, but I'm going to assume he's a Christian because no, I don't know any other religion that just goes, we're going to wander around and pray and tell everyone that it'll make things better. If you believe that, that's spectacular, and it might work for you because you believe it. I don't. I just happen to use this thing called common sense and know not to use a gun. How hard could that possibly be? I do not need to be told by someone that I believe is imaginary to be nice to other people. It's just the way I am. Oh, and just so you know, you should brace yourself for the forthcoming sh storm that's going to hit sometime this fall because there's a tv show on the cw network called dc's legends of tomorrow yes it is a superhero tv show part of the Arrowverse. if you don't know what that is don't worry about it the point i'm about to make is actress talia ash will be playing a character on the show this coming season called zari adriana tomas who is a muslim hacker from the year 2030 who may be the latest incarnation of DC comic superhero and Egyptian goddess Isis, who was last seen on television back in 1976, played by Joanna Cameron. How many people do you think are going to find out that there's a character on TV called Isis and completely bypass the historical fact of her being an Egyptian god, whether she was real or not, she's an Egyptian god, just as much of a god as your Christian-based one, and think... It must be a terrorist thing. We must get rid of this show. Protest, protest, protest. Where's my gun? Although, I am going to predict this. Shortly after this story becomes big and enough people have a hissy fit about another character named Isis being on TV, Donald Trump will claim to have defeated Isis when he had the show canceled in 76 because back then he grabbed Joanna Cameron's p***y 
and she punched him in the face for it. Okay, did I make that last bit up? I truly hope so. Although, would you really be surprised if it didn't happen that way? If you have any questions, comments, or anything you want to say about the show, contact me through, let's say, email rob at thefwatshow.com. Go to the website, thefwatshow.com, and contact me through Facebook or Twitter, because there's buttons for that. While you're there, go ahead and subscribe to the show on iTunes or through the Google Play Store or Blueberry or wherever you happen to have found the show, because I'm sure there's a subscription button somewhere, and I'm almost always here, except for next week, taking the week off, because... This new stuff is giving me a massive headache. And no, it's not the weather front that's come in. Oh yeah, and I keep forgetting about this. While you're on the website, don't forget to visit the Fwat shop where you can get a t-shirt or a hat or even a coffee mug with a show logo. Help support the show because uh, who doesn't need support these days? Especially with Donald Trump cutting support for everything. I would like to thank Jesus Jones for doing the theme song in the background. Still an excellent song. And I will play the full version once they say, hey, go ahead and play the full version. And until then, I'm going to leave you with just a bit of advice that I saw this week. And I I thought it was brilliant. And I'd like to pass it along to you because I care about the people who listen to my show. I want you to remember to ask your doctor if advice from a television commercial is right for you. Give that some thought and be safe because it's gotten really damn weird out there.